the football game. All right, folks. Thanks for following along. Uh, we are here for, I can't even remember, I think we're like episode 41 or 43, something like that, of Elk Talk Live. And we, let's see, today is, is today the 4th, right? Yesterday was the deadline for Colorado. And I hope that, he, I got an email from a guy saying, hey, it was on April Fool's Day. Guess what? Colorado extended the deadline a week. It was an April Fool's joke. I hope none of you got that same email and ended up missing the Colorado deadline yesterday. But anyhow, with let's see. Behind us we have Wyoming, Arizona, Utah, Montana, uh, New Mexico, uh, Col yeah, Colorado. All those are behind us. So we don't have many left in front of it. Let's see. We got three left in front of us, I think. Yeah, we've got... Nevada on April 16th, we got Oregon May 15th, and we got Idaho on June 1st. So all these limited entry tags we talk about in these main western elk states, most of the deadlines have passed. You got three left. And once we get past those three, then we're going to be looking at over-the-counter, leftover, uh, anything where you can get a tag without having to draw the tag. So today we're going to spend quite a bit of time focusing on Nevada. Yesterday, Marcus and I shot the video that's going to pop up, up on our YouTube channel about how the Nevada system works. And I don't want everyone to have to wait that long, so we'll go over a bunch of that tonight. Um, but before we do, remember, you need to text Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, to this number, 77453. Because today, we were on the phone with the, all the attorney legal issues and we're like that close to having the uh, sweepstakes hunt sorted out where I, I, I'm hoping next week I get the go ahead to say, all right, this is the hunt. This is what we're doing. I can tell you it's going to be an archery hunt. I can tell you it's most likely going to be in Colorado and it's probably going to be sometime in the first week or so, maybe the first 10 days of September. So you're going to want to be in the pool of notification like giving us your text number if you're going to do that because that's how we're going to draw it. Anyone who has signed up online or anyone who signed up via text are the people who are going to get notified or get uh, entered into this drawing. You aren't going to have to buy anything. There's none of this, that, nothing. Just be signed up for Elk Talk Live and someone's going elk hunting. Uh, but before we get into the questions, we got to talk about who makes it possible. Botech. Leupold, Onyx Maps, use Randy as the promo code, get 20% off their app products. Uh, tight spot quivers, ripcord arrow rests, black gold sights, gohunt.com, use Randy as that promo code when you sign up for their insider and get $50 of cash to spend in their store. Uh, Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, and I think I've covered it. Yeah, for right now. If I've missed somebody, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. So, we're going to get right to the questions here. Marcus, are we really live on Facebook? Do you know? Yeah. We are? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Oh, look at that. 41 comments. Look at that. 41 comments, and we haven't been on for three minutes. Uh-oh. So, uh, let me get in here. I think someone needed a clarification on the number to text. Someone wanted a clarification. Text Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, to 77453. All right. Patrick wants to know. Uh oh, what did I do? I just lost my feed here. Did your feed go away? No, I'm still good. Oh, all right. Patrick, I was just getting your question about my archery setup. Uh, my archery setup. Uh, oh, I see. He's saying, Randy, what's your setup for archery hunting with three guys in the group all having tags? Uh, first of all, I'd tell one of them, you're going to be the shooter, and the other two are probably going to be the callers, and I'd rotate. I wouldn't, I mean, Everyone's going to carry their bow, yeah? No doubt about that. But I would set up in a way that I could use the benefit of having three people. One shooter out front, and then I'm going to have the two guys back, maybe one quite a ways back, and then one, like when I say quite a ways, I'm like maybe 20 yards from the shooter, 30 yards from the shooter, and then one maybe even a little further back than that. But I'm certainly going to have the shooters. So yeah, let's say the wind is going this way. 
and the elk is out here. Here's the shooter. I'm going to have the collar slightly upwind from the shooter because when the bull comes into the calling noise, he's going to swing downwind to try and smell where this calling is coming from. And if you set it up right, he's going to come walking right into the shooter. That's how I would do that setup. All right. Holy cow. How did we have that many already? Scott Johnson, five months till elk season. I'm with you, man. Can't get here soon enough. I need to get through tax season. I got to get up running up and down the hills because I am out of shape right now. I'm, it, it's not going to be, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Uh, let's see. Randy, you're missing tax season. Uh, James, no, I think tax season is missing me. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Outdoors Hunter says, I bought points only in Colorado, trying to rack up points and hunting Colorado every year on an over-the-counter tag. That's a really good strategy. You can either apply and get a point or just say, you know what, I'm going to get my point and hunt over-the-counter units in Colorado waiting to have enough points for that, you know, one glory tag, that one really good hunt that you might want. I, I do the same thing. That's exactly what I do. Uh... Let's see, JR says, California, come on, Randy, we give out like 475 tags total. I'm sorry, JR, I don't think you're going to get me there. I, I, and I don't even know if any of those tags go to non-residents. They probably do, but uh, let's see. There's all kinds of people from all kinds of places. Uh, let's see, what's, what's your strategy for hunting prairie elk? You've seen that I've hunted them in these grassland areas of... Uh, New Mexico, I do a lot of spot and stock. I let them go to their beds. I'm, so a lot of times when they go to their beds, depending on what time of year it is, sometimes if it's just a lone bull, he'll have like a bed that he's gonna sit in for a little while, but then he's gonna go to what I call his day bed. He's gonna move a little bit. It might only be 10 yards, but it might be a quarter mile. And he's gonna go find his shade and he's gonna get set up for the day. And once he gets to that day bed, you know he's there to stay. And that's when I make my approach. And I also make sure that it's at that time of day when the thermals are very consistent. That early morning period, the thermals are trying to decide, oh, is it warm, is it cold, Am I, is the wind gonna go uphill, downhill? Wait until the thermals get really consistent, say 10, 11 in the morning until all afternoon. It's gonna make your stock way better. I've got rambunctious before not been patient, tried to sneak in on one when those thermals are kind of mixing. No, never works. I'm, <laughs> I have a hard enough time. I don't need to, to get impatient and make it even harder. Uh, let's see. Marcus, if you got any, you let me know because I'm trying my, heck, my best to uh, scan through these. And there's a lot of them. Oh, a bunch of people said nobody got texts messages this week uh oh we're gonna have to check into that there are like 10 people who said i didn't get a text notification uh oh no the number i'm sorry folks i'm not sure what happened Someone huh wondering if they're hunting western wyoming and have a good pair of 10 by 42 binoculars how important is a spotting scope if so if you're hunting western wyoming and you have a pair of 10 by 42 binos do you need a spotting scope in archery season, certainly not, because you're not going to be doing as much glassing in archery season. If you're going later in the season, I would say that you don't need one if you have a really good pair of binos. Like, I have these little pulled 10 by, uh, same ones, I have 10 by 42 BX4, the HDs. And if I put them on a tripod, and I'm really, really slow, really deliberate in my glassing, I can glass really, really good, and an elk's a pretty big animal, but it, it's still not the same as being there dialed in with my 60 millimeter gold ring, because with that, I can crank that thing up to 25, to 30, to 35, whatever, and if I see something, I can really get in on it, but I, I would say that it would probably, it, you're going to be okay, but if weight's not an issue, if you already have a spotting scope, you might want to think about packing it in there. I know this guy right here running the camera, Marcus, he carries his gold ring no matter where he goes, 
So I kind of cheat a little bit. I'm like, I'm not going to carry mine today because I know Marcus has his. Marcus has a, a 60 millimeter gold ring identical to mine. And uh, I, I, the reason I say that is there's been times where I'm like, oh, we're not going to need spotters today. And weight was an issue. So I left mine at the truck. And we get up there and I'm like, man, I think that's an antler. I think that's an ear. And I can't quite tell through my tent powers because it's far enough away or there's shadows or there's a lot of brush. And fortunately, Marcus saved the day, grabbed his spotter. No, sorry, Randy, that's just a dead limb. So there, there are times where I'd say, bring it even if you don't think you need it. Uh, let's see. Oh boy, there's all kinds of stuff going on here. What do you think of the new application process in Colorado? What do I think of the new application process in Colorado? Or I guess changes, I think. Yeah, it's changed this year. Um, you know, whatever Colorado wants to do, I'm a non-resident there, so any hunting I get to do in Colorado is strictly at the pleasure of Colorado residents. So I try not to give really strong opinions. The new website worked really good when I went and used it. Some people would say, oh, I don't like it that you don't have to front all the money because now more people are going to apply and buy points. You know what? I'm sure that's the case. But that's how Colorado does it. So as a non-resident, I just play whatever the, by whatever the rules are and let it go. But the, the website was pretty user-friendly, I thought. All right, Randy, you better get in shape if you're inviting me to come hunt with you in Colorado. That's Carol and Jim. You know what? I, I need to get in shape. There's no doubt about that. But that's what spring bear hunting is for. Spring bear hunting is how to get rid of the taxis and blues. Uh, Randy, you should hunt with the born and raised out guy, outdoors guys in Land of the Free Project. You know what? I'm doing a podcast with them next week. Uh, so... I'm sure that topic will come up. They're good guys. Uh, Randy, going to Colorado in September, what are your thoughts on using my smartphone with my Onyx maps instead of a handheld GPS device? My opinion would be do what I do. Have it on your phone and use it like crazy. Uh, we went over this last week. Uh, right here I'm going to my Onyx app. Boom. It comes up. There we go, right? And there's my GPS. How slick is that? I can switch between satellite view, hybrid view, topo view. I can do all kinds of cool things with this. And a lot of people, the first thing they're gonna say is, well, what if I'm in an area without coverage? If you're in an area without coverage, the beauty is put it on airplane mode, your GPS still works. And what you wanna do is go off, do the, I think it's called off grid, yeah. You go off grid and you click the button that says save new map and then it saves the map of the area you're going to be hunting you got to do that before you get out there obviously so when you know what unit it is you say save new map all right save and you get to name your map so now that map is saved on this phone as your gps and it knows exactly where you're at and it's using the downloaded map on your phone and you don't need service how cool is that huh and when you put it on airplane mode it's not going to be searching for service your battery life is going to be a lot longer there is no gps unit out there that will give you this level of detail that you get here i mean you just zoom in on the satellite view and it's amazing you know it, usually what you get on a gps is you get this kind of generic gray or green or yellow or whatever well that doesn't tell me nearly as much as what the satellite or hybrid view tell me oh look at that fire right there i got my fire layer turned on on my maps huh good luck getting that on your gps so yeah do it i i'm, I'm one of those guys i'm old school marcus and michael have been using that uh phone app for I don't know, Marcus, when did you start using it? Two or three years ago? Yeah, I mean, when they yeah. came out, not too long after they came out. Yeah, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm old school. I'm going to use the old GPS. After two years of using the smart app, smartphone app, I, I don't see myself using the, uh, the handheld GPS hardly ever anymore. Uh, so 
And if you go there and you buy any of the app products for that phone, for your phone, use promo code Randy. They, gonna, they will give you 20% off for doing that. So, all right, folks, I get it. It says no text. All right. Uh, like 300 people have said that. <laughs> I'm going to tell the folks who run that notification system that you're, you're getting me in trouble. So, uh, Randy, have you ever used a 50 millimeter spotter? Yep, I have. I have a gold ring, 50 millimeter. When weight is really, really an issue, and I've used it on a Alpine Sitka blacktail hunt in Alaska when weight was really an issue, and it worked great. Um, I do love the 60 millimeter though. The whole world sees me using that. It's my 60 millimeter gold ring from Leopold has got the compactness and the weight factor that is hard to match. It's got great, great glass. And so you add that weight compactness benefit of being by far the best in class to the wonderful glass. And it's hard to leave that 60 millimeter at home, even though the 50 millimeter is way lighter, uh, at low light, 60 millimeter is just going to give you that much better clarity around the edges than a smaller 50 or, or any, you know, if you could go out there with a 300 millimeter lens, guess what? You'd really be able to see good, but obviously weight is going to be there. So I've found that 60 is that sweet spot for me. Oh, uh, let's see. How far will you travel between spots in a unit? Jonathan asked that. Boy, that depends. Uh, I'm trying to think, Marcus, there's been some places like when we were down on the Kaibab that day, I bet you we went 10 miles north and 30 miles south. So in one day we travel 40 miles different. It, it just depends um, what we're seeing, where we're at. I don't like to travel that far. When I do my desk scouting, my e-scouting, I like to say, all right, this is the general area. There's you know three basins or whatever right in here, and I'm going to hunt those three basins. Uh, and if you see how we did the videos on that last summer with uh, Onyx Maps, how we do it, uh, you'll see that we try not to travel real far. You know, four or five miles, yeah, but I'd like to keep it that tight. Uh, ever hunted Kentucky or any recommendations? I've not hunted Kentucky, but if they would give me a tag, an elk tag, I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, Marcus, what is it? This is for you. Matt Adams asks, what's a decent beginner camera if I want to try to film my own hunt? Do we have that one here? Here we go. What's your budget? Yeah, I don't know what your budget is, but here's Randy's new POV camera, right? You see that? Sony, you don't need the 4K version. Save yourself some money. Unless you're doing what we're doing, you don't need the 4K. This thing is slick. This model is, I can't even remember, it's so new. This, I've only used it for a couple things. Uh, this is the FDH uh, AX53 is what this one is. They make a version uh, cheaper and slightly smaller than this. The Sony ones are really, really good. The image quality, the image stabilization, Go with that. Don't go, don't go get a GoPro. A GoPro, once you get out past about 10 yards, it's got this really bad warped fisheye effect. And they're really bad on batteries. They, they have a purpose and we use them a lot. Um, oh, Trent is asking me, have I ever hunted in the Lee Metcalf of Montana? All my buddies in Montana are going to shoot me if I tell them, yes, I have. And uh, there's decent elk hunting in there. Uh, it's tough, tough country though. Really, really tough country. Uh, Dan Larson asks, going into Montana grizzly country, would you carry a pistol versus bear spray in the wind? I'm carrying bear spray um, just because all the studies show it's none of it's perfect. Okay, the, the, your odds are better with bear spray of deterring an attack than with a handgun. I, I'm going to go with what the odds say. Uh, Tucker asks, 30-06 or 300 wind mag? Whichever works for you. Both of them are very good elk medicine. Just use quality bullets. I use the Nosler partitions uh, in my 308. In my 300 wind mag, I use Nosler Acubons. They're both really good, really good bullets. Holy cow, these are going so fast, Marcus, I can't keep up with them. Why is everyone asking you questions, Marcus? I think you need to come and sit in this chair here. 
Uh, let's see. Someone wants to know if I've ever been gator hunting. No, I haven't. Uh, let's see. When you use your Onyx, do you keep your battery all day when it's cold? How do you keep your battery all day when it's cold? I keep my Onyx as much as I can inside my, my chest right here. I've got a, a pocket inside my coat and I keep it there most of the time. Uh, it'll keep it warmer, it'll keep the battery better. And we bring these little, what are those? Are they Mophies, is that what they're called, Marcus? These little charging things that we use to charge our phones? Uh, I don't know, I, I've had it several different Oh, uh, Marcus is, I, I don't know what, I, I think the brand I have is Mophie, but the, uh, there's all kinds of them. So we bring the little ones where you can get two or three charges in a day if you need it, or out of a unit if you need it. Um, that's how we keep it going that way. Uh, let's see. It says nice camera work, Marcus. <laughs> All right. Clinton asks, Leupold VX5 or VX6? Depends on what features you want. You can't go wrong with either one. Uh, the VX6, you can get a few more features on there. Uh, just pick what, what you're looking for and go with it. I have them both and I'm never going without them. Uh... When working in a pair, should the collar have a bugle or a cow call or both? Should the archer use a bugle as well? Uh, once that bull's coming in, the archer shouldn't say anything because those elk, they will lock into you. They will know within a foot or two where you're at. You don't want the shooter, the archer, to make any noise. You want the collar back there making all the noise and let the bull tell you what he or she wants. <laughs> the bull tell you what he or she wants right let the bull tell you what he wants whether he wants a he or a she uh and go with that but whatever you do uh don't uh don't have the collar make a noise jonathan pinky says randy i saw your cameo appearance on the elk project have you ever thought about doing longer episodes instead of just 20 minutes yep uh, we just approved a Montana moose episode today for our Amazon platform that was 37 minutes. Uh, let's see, your elk hunt, Marcus, what was that, 32 or 33 minutes? Uh, so all the stuff you're going to see on our Amazon channel, well, the, the one we put on Amazon already, season one, or season six, episode one, that was over 30 minutes. So, yeah, we're pretty much everything we do that's going on Amazon going forward, uh, is going to be over 20 minutes. Uh, let's see. What's the weather like in late May and June during the spring bear hunt in southeast Alaska? That depends. I've been there five or six times. About half the time it's rained really hard, and the other half it's been really nice. When we, you were there two years ago with us, Marcus, it was beautiful. Yeah. Did you even see a cloud uh, that week? There's nothing to time-lapse Whereas the year before when I was there, it was, no, two years before that, it was just seven days of torrential rain. So you never know. Oh, gosh. Holy smokes. You got anything, Marcus? I am, I'm trying to read these, but it is. The difference between a Howa 1500 that's from the store versus pieced together through brown animals. Uh, is there a difference between a Howa Model 1500 that you buy at, say, a big box sporting's goods store or at Brownells? No, the same thing. So what gets shipped to Brownells is the barreled actions, the same thing that they build the, the 1500s out of that you'd buy from a, a retailer. Uh, Rob wants to know, will YouTube start blocking your videos with their new no-gun policy? Uh, I don't think so. If you listen to our last podcast, we talked about it, and so far, nothing. So I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't think they will, but I guess we'll see. Uh, Brian, love the promo codes. Me too, Brian. Use them. Randy, we made it easy, right? R-A-N-D-Y. Uh, how bad are Montana state sales taxes for a hunter looking to relocate? We don't have a sales tax in Montana. How about that, huh? I love it. It's weird, though, when you travel to another state after you live in Montana for 30 years, you know, here, you go in and you buy something and it says it's $4.50. All right, yeah, give them $4.50. You go to some other state, they're like, well, that's uh, $5.08. No, it's four fifty. Anyhow, so Montana's got that going for it. Not that that has anything to do with elk hunting. Uh, all right. 
How can we get notified when new episodes are up on your Amazon channel? Unfortunately, Amazon doesn't have a notification. Go there however often you can and type in Randy Newberg Hunt. No, Loopholds Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. That's the channel there. Uh, is Southwest Utah good for elk hunting? Yeah, if you can get a tag, that Southwest Desert, desert unit is a very good unit to get. But I, yeah, hopefully you got a lot of points. Um, solid pants matter during archery elk. Uh, Jeremiah and Lania Carson. Nope. I think that if you have a good solid, it's probably going to work okay. Uh, I know our camera guy, Tyler, he hunts in solids just about year-round. Sitka makes some really, really good solids. Uh, let's see. Have I hunted the North Park area of, of northern Colorado around Walden? I have for antelope, but not for elk. Um, and the antelope area I hunted was all BLM ground. There weren't any elk there, so I, I really couldn't give you much there. Uh, Randy, Brendan asked this. Montana, draw, or Colorado for a first-time elk hunter? If you're an archery hunter, I'd say Montana. If you're a rifle hunter, I'd say Colorado. Now someone's going to say, what, what, what do you mean? Why, why would it be different? Uh, someone asked, are the elk bugling in Colorado in early October? Are the elk bugling in Colorado in early October? It uh, depends on what early is, but yeah, probably if you're talking the first 10 days. Yeah, I would bet they are. Um, they, they are in a lot of other places. Uh, I know in Montana here. Our archery season goes until what, Marcus? Usually like October 15th, somewhere in there. And they're still bugling. I, we shot, my son and I both shot bulls in central Montana on Halloween that were bugling their brains out. We shot them out of the same herd. And uh, it was it, it was crazy to see that kind of bugling. What When was it when we were with Pat in Wyoming and they were bugling in November? like? November 15th they're just going crazy all I can figure is there must have been a cow or two in that herd that had come into a next cycle and uh, it was <laughs> I thought it was a hunter I'm like that's some fool out here with a bugle in November well guess what <laughs> the elk were out there bugling in November uh, uh, let's see Do you, Randy, Kurt asks, Randy, is a Realm X five feet per second, oh, that, that one's passing so fast I can't catch it here, worth the extra over the standard Realm that is more forgiving? It really depends on what you're looking for. For me, uh, I'm, I'm more partial to something that is more forgiving because I, I just know that I'm not one of those really guys, per, guys with really perfect form. I need some forgiveness. I'll give up that extra five feet per second for something that is a little more forgiving. And so I have both the Realm and the Realm X. Uh, I love them both, but you'll probably see me using the Realm a little more than the Realm X. Uh, Adam asks, what's your preference? Hunting early pre-rut on public land before the elk are higher pressured by other hunters, or do you just love hunting right smack in the middle of the rut? I'm going right smack in the middle of the rut, all things being equal. I, I don't care if they've been pressured. I, I don't know. I, I hunt for the fun, the pleasure, the excitement. And I know that, you know, those out, they've probably been pressured, but they're still bugling. I'm running and chasing them. That's what I'd rather do. So, but there's probably a reason why some guys feel more tags than I do. Uh, they're, they're better. Uh, Ryan asks, Randy, what rest do you shoot uh, on my bow? Uh, I think I've, I don't know that I've, since Ripcord came into business, I don't think I've ever had anything other than a Ripcord. Uh, they have their drop away rests that are just really, really good. Uh, Craig says, I'm about to order a wall tent for elk camp to accommodate three to four hunters. I'm thinking 12 by 14 is big enough, or should I go 14 to 16? If you got four guys, you're going to want 14 by 16 if you have a stove in there. If you got three guys, you can probably get by with a 12 to 14. But even there, you're going to have to do some planning. I've had them, I've had all kinds of tents, and uh, it's 
go go I, I guess if you can go to the store where you're going to buy it go check out and see how much space difference there is a 14 by 16 is big it gives you a lot of room to spread out dry things out it's uh really good steve asked do i use a 50 millimeter or 40 millimeter scope on my rifle uh it depends uh sometimes i use a i think one of my vx6s is a 44. yeah uh pretty sure or is it my vx5 <laughs> i got so many uh i use both it depends on the situation if i'm looking for compactness and wanting to save weight say on my lightweight mountain rifle i'm going to go with the smaller objective lens if weight isn't really an issue I'm going with the bigger lens all the time. So uh, it really depends on what you think uh, your applications are going to be and what you need it for. So, uh, but before we go any further, again, I'm sorry you guys didn't get text messages today. I'm not sure what happened there, but we're going to get that fixed. And if you want to get notified, text Randy, R A N D Y, to 77453. I got it written right over there. That way I can't transpose it. And we want to make sure that if you are interested in buying any gear, any equipment, any services, that you remember who makes these uh, Bo uh, Elk Talk Live things possible. And Botech was the brainchild of this. They put it together and all the other partners have jumped in and said, Randy, we want to cover the cost. You just sit there and you tell whatever you can to to help people and uh, those companies are Botech, Leupold, Onyx Maps, Tight Spot Quivers, Ripcord Arrow Rest, Black Gold Sights, uh, GoHunt and GoHunt.com uh, and Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. And uh, we're getting ready to, when are we doing the podcast release with Todd next weekend? So Todd Orr, if you watched uh, uh, YouTube in, or uh, Facebook in, I think it was October of 2016, you might have seen a picture or a video of a guy who'd been mauled by a grizzly bear and he's filming himself once he got back to his truck. Well, Todd Orr lives here in Bozeman and we did a podcast with him last week that's going to release uh, next Sunday. Uh, this Sunday. What? Where's the calendar? The uh, 7th, I believe. And uh, you're going to want to listen to that one. It is someone here have answered or asked questions about grizzly bears. Uh, Todd's got a really good perspective. And he has shot 28 bull elk on public land with a handgun. How's that, huh? That's bad. That, that's like as cool as it gets. Uh, we also want to make sure people know you can find our new episodes coming out on Amazon. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, uh, you'll find them there. And hopefully you'll go to our YouTube channel and watch our tips and our daily day-by-day -day stuff and other things. And uh, then eventually, after our new episodes are on Amazon, we do move them over to YouTube also af after that. The YouTube channel is called Randy Newberg Hunter. The Amazon channel is called Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. Leupold's Fresh Tracks with Randy Newberg. Uh, <laughs> TJ says, Randy, I have to babysit a friend's kids the night of the RMEF banquet. Can you grab me some sweet gear? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I can get that to you, TJ. Otherwise, I'd try. Uh, who gives the best chance of an over-the-counter elk tag? Which state? Clinton asked that. Colorado and Idaho are your best chances for that. Uh, Ellen asked, Randy, will new episodes still be available on YouTube? Yep, they will. It just takes a little while for us to get them there because we have to put them out on Amazon for about mm, two to three weeks before we move them over to, to YouTube. So that way they'll be in both places. Uh, Corbett says, Randy, bought a Mystery Ranch Metcalf pack. Best pack I've owned. Thanks. Thanks for buying it. Uh, all right. Here's one. A lot of people ask this. Jerry asks, do you prefer an open read call or a diaphragm call Call for cow calling? I'm a diaphragm guy. Marcus? Diaphragm. diaphragm. Uh, and it takes some practice. And for me, it didn't take practice as much as it took the guys over at Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, Rocky and Kurt. They took the time to say, all right, try this one, try that one. And they could hear it. Randy, you're getting some air squeaking through there. Your seal on the roof of your mouth isn't tight. And so they're like, all right, you got a flat roof to your mouth. Try this one. And I tried it and all of a sudden the whole world of calling just got that much better. So 
try different calls until you find the one that makes a really good seal in the roof of your mouth because that's how you're going to control the airflow and the pressure which equates to what you have for pitch and tone and volume so i'm a diaphragm guy though uh randy what do you think of the 28 nosler for elk uh i think with good bullets it's going to be really good it's the 28 is the equivalent of a 7 mm uh, as far as caliber of bullet, I mean, think about how many elk the 7mm has taken. I think it would be great. Uh, Michael says, can the draw results in New Mexico take any longer? Yeah, they can. I think they're going to take about another three or four weeks. So <laughs> it's just, it's how it is. Uh, when do we find out in Montana, Marcus? April 16th? Yep. So the day that Nevada is due is the day Montana supposedly is going to let us know about deer and elk. What if they mess up? What if they delay us? Because there might be some people waiting to see what happens in Montana before they, or, yeah, in Montana before they apply in Nevada. Oh, well, I guess that's how it rolls, huh? Uh, have I ever hunted around Durango, Colorado? No, I haven't hunted there. I've driven by there a lot. It's a beautiful place man it is really really nice uh, but i've not hunted elk there scott asks have i ever hunted elk in new mexico unit two no i've hunted deer there uh uh see he says i chose that unit as an archery because of the high chance of drawing but i have concerns about finding elk i'd share that same concern about finding elk i'd be over hunting right next to the mascalero apache reservation we found some shed antlers while we were down there shed elk antlers we found them all way over on the east side of unit two right up against the uh the uh, did i say mascalero i meant hickoria hickoria apache reservation and if you find some hanging in trees down there you know randy newberg's been here uh all right Let's see the bull on the wall behind Randy. That's Marcus's bull. Every, every Marcus, last week they asked Michael to show your bull there. What's the story? Where is that a Montana bull, right? Yeah. Archery? No. Nah, was... Rifle? Oh. Okay. And I'm not allowed to tell where it is. He lies anyhow. When you ask Marcus where he shot something, he can't believe a word he said. So if he tells you that he shot that bull and somewhere over west of Butte, the odds are he probably was hunting somewhere down in southeast Montana. So uh oh justin trout says randy what are the details on the new titan all right some of you've been following along i've bought five nissan titans out of my own pocket because the pro 4x i've found was the best off-road hunting ready rig i could find and that's what i need it for i need a truck that's i can almost make into a side-by-side -side atv and so they called me and said randy can we send you a new one and have you test it, abuse it, do whatever you do, and give us all the feedback you can. So that's the deal. A lot of people are like, did you get the diesel version? No, I got the gas version because the gas version is a little more nimble, has better approach angles, breakover angles. It's just works better for me. Uh, so it's it's not hunting season right now, so it's, it's going to be all right. But anyone who watches what I do to trucks knows that that truck is not going to look the same this time next year. So that's the skinny on that one. Thanks for asking. Uh, Kyle's asking, when is the next season of Fresh Tracks coming out? Uh, episode one of the next season's already out on Amazon. Episode two, uh, I think in the next week, is going to be there. Uh, episode three, we just loaded up. Uh, that one should be there in the next month. So if you're out on Amazon Prime, uh, one of them's already there, and they're going to be rolling out over time. So uh darren how do you ask how do you know when to bugle or or at a bowl or use a cow call uh kind of let them tell you also depends on how you're going after them don't think that highly pressured elk are going to come into your calls like yeah all right oh, when i first started this whole game i was the worst at anything you, you name it i was the worst elk hunter worst elk caller worst at knowing what they do and I'd watch too many of these videos and stuff thinking elk just come walking right up to your call. Well, maybe they do that in a place they never get hunted. But public land elk don't do that. Okay, You need to get as close as you possibly can and figure out how to get a response out of them. 
Most people will tell you, the guys who shoot a lot of elk, that if you're solo, your best chance is going to be bugling, getting that bull mad and getting him to come to you. Now, if you have a buddy or two to call behind you, maybe it's going to be cow calls that work better than, than bugles. So, uh, Hunter asks, when hunting elk post rut, so late October on public land, how far do you stray from low traffic hiking trails? Um, you know what? It, it doesn't, I can't say that that's a set distance. Uh, if it's just a hiking trail, uh, I'm trying to think in Colorado, that bull I shot, I was maybe 300 yards from a hiking trail. Uh, well, the one we shot in Colorado, Marcus, that was yeah. such a one to get out of there. How far off the trail were we when I shot? 50 yards? Yeah. So. It just depends. And then we've shot them a long way. Well, your bull in Colorado last year? In Wyoming. In, or in Wyoming? Yeah. We, we were standing we, <laughs> 20 yards off a trail. So it, it just depends. It depends on how much traffic that trail gets, how far it is from other motorized uh, trails and things. Uh, Sean Foster asks, any plans for a podcast with you and Steve Rinella? You know, Steve and I visit a lot. Uh, great guy. If I was you, I'd go listen to his podcast, follow his stuff. Uh, he's always got good stuff. But the reality is, he and I have such busy schedules. We it's like we we never can get on the same page. We've tried. I was on his podcast about two years ago, uh, but since then we we've, we've struggled to get calendars to match. So uh, let's see. Where would I get a pair of those sweet leather mittens that you wear? Those are called chopper mitts. If you go to Google, type in chopper mittens, uh, a lot of them will come up. Uh, what's that new joint in Duluth, Minnesota? Uh, like Spirit or something? Oh, anyhow, there's a place in Duluth where I got my last pair. I'm embarrassed that I forgot. Um, but they'll keep your hands warm for sure. Uh, someone says, all reviews on Amazon gives Fresh Tracks uh, episodes five stars. You must be doing something right. Hey, if you're giving us five stars, folks, thanks a ton. That helps a lot. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so, <laughs> John says, I've never been west of Bemidji, Minnesota. Well, if you, if you grew up 70 miles north of Bermidji like I did, we called it Bermidji. Uh, and he says, I'm going to Idaho next October. What am I in for? Uh, you're in for a great time. You're in for an eye-opening experience. You can't get in too good of shape. Uh, I, I just can't overemphasize that. There's nothing that hunting in the Midwest can prepare you for that compares to hunting in a place, say, like Idaho. Uh, but mostly go there and have a good time. Make sure that it's about having fun, and you will have a ton of fun there. Uh, let's see. Have I done an episode on packing gear for a hunt? I think we've done a few bag dumps, but we haven't really done... Wait, we do, the Alaska Black Bear one, we did a packing one, right? Yep. And we're going to... This year, we're going to try to do more of those because a lot of people ask. If you go out to our YouTube channel, we do bag dumps, we do packing, we do talking about... Uh, gear we use those ones get a lot of views so it's telling us we need to do more of that so uh, appreciate that input uh, Christopher asks have I ever hunted near Craig Colorado I've not I've hunted over by Rangeley but not by Craig uh, would I elk hunt in Saskatchewan Trenton asked there are monsters there uh, I wouldn't because non-residents aren't allowed to hunt elk in Saskatchewan unless they're in a pen and uh, I'm just not, uh, I, I'm just not going to go do that. So I, I get that there are big ones there, but not for me. Uh, have I ever hunted elk in Arizona at Unit 1? I've helped a friend who had a tag there. And if you, Arizona, if ever you want to give me a Unit 1 elk tag, I don't care if it's archery, I don't care if it's muzzleloader, I don't care if it's early rifle, late rifle, let me go. Oh, man. It is amazing, unbelievable. Uh, let's see. Oh, Tim says Oklahoma draw hunts now open. 
good elk in Oklahoma. I wonder if non-residents can apply in Oklahoma. You don't even think about it. I know they have a herd out there in the panhandle. Hmm. Gosh. Never even thought about that. Uh, huh. Maybe we need to investigate Oklahoma, Marcus. <laughs> we are we already did Kentucky where we we do uh, apply in some of the stranger places Alaska I've never drawn there uh, someday maybe I will oh I think Marcus and I are going to agree on this question what's your favorite meal for pack in hunts would it be my wife's lasagna but we never pack it in those are yeah. base camps my wife makes this amazing lasagna that she freezes in vacuum bags and then we warm up in these pots of water what's your favorite mountain house marcus mine's um, chicken teriyaki yeah, pretty good. Chicken teriyaki. Chick yeah beef my, stroganoff uh, marcus is, is he does beef stroganoff uh for me in the morning i'm a blueberries and granola guy uh, and then I'm a chicken teriyaki at night. So that's what we do on a pack in hunt. Uh, Jake asks, Randy, what's your preferred Sitka jacket for a November rifle elk hunt? My uniform for that hunt is I have my jet stream jacket from Sitka and then my pants are always going to be my Timberline pants. And I've been using that combination for seven or eight years. Bomb proof, absolutely bomb proof. And it's great. Uh, someone asked, if residents and non-residents apply as a group hunt in New Mexico, will that give non-residents the same draw odds as the residents? No. And I don't even know if residents and non-residents can apply as a party. Maybe you can. I've never really thought about it. Uh, I, but it's not going to improve a non-residents draw odds. It will hurt a residents draw odds. Uh, Randy, when do Colorado results get posted? Uh, they're going to get posted usually in late May. Uh, and usually they do like the moose and goat and sheep, and then they go to elk and then deer and then antelope. So they stagger it. Uh, the, a lot of people get frustrated. I don't know if they'll do it different this year when, when now they have uh, a different uh, system that they're using, a, using for the draw. But that's how they've done it in the past. Uh, let's see... What's the difference between the VX3i and the VX5? Uh, well, the power and magnification ratio. So a VX3 has a magnification ratio of 3. So it's 3 to 9, 4 to 12. I think it, actually, I think it's 4.5 to 14. Uh, and a VX5 has a, five rate, a ratio of 5 in magnification. So it wouldn't be 3 to 9, it'd be 3 to 15. Or it'd be 2 to 10. So that's the biggest fe biggest difference. Yeah, there's some difference in the lenses and the coatings slightly. Uh, and a lot of it is features. Uh, they're both just unbelievable quality. Uh, you're not going to go wrong with either one of them. Uh, let's see. David asks, in your podcast about the five-day elk hunt, you said if you don't see elk the first three days, you get aggressive in your tactics. Can I expand on that? Yeah. Uh, I'm a little bit passive the first few days because if I know there are elk somewhere in there, I don't want to blow them out. I want to wait for that perfect opportunity. Aha, I found them. I'll wait for the wind. I'll wait for the, you know, whatever the light. And then I'll ease in and try to make that shot. If the shot doesn't work out the first couple of days, I'll pull back and I'll leave them there undisturbed. Now, if it's the last day or two and it's like, you know what? I don't really have anything to lose and I see an elk, I'm going to go in there and I'm probably going to take a little more risk and a little more chance because if I blow them out, it's not like I have a lot and I don't have three or four more days to be hunting that same herd. So I get more aggressive and it's I seem to have more luck as I get more aggressive. So uh, just maybe it's the way I do it. Uh, Mike Lynn, uh, we answer this probably every third or fourth uh episode but it gets asked a lot so i'll answer it again for elk hunting do i use fixed blade or expandables uh for my archery setup i use fixed blades most of the guys i know uh who do a lot of western elk hunting elk are big tough animals most of the guys i know not all but most are going to use fixed blades uh justin just said oh randy you're looking for the chopper mitts at frost river in duluth that's it frost river thank you uh all right 
And then someone says, lots of chopper mitts choices on Amazon. Boy, everyone's into the chopper mitts. Oh, well, that's because I'm so far behind on how all... <laughs> Look at how many questions... 386 comments, Marcus. How am I going to answer 386 questions? I probably don't know the answer to any of the 386, but I make it... Kind of make it up. Uh, Cody says, Randy, I see that you wear orange vests sometimes, but not all the time. Do you not have to wear blaze orange all the time? A lot of the western states, you don't have to wear blaze orange. So Idaho, orange is not required. Nevada, it's not required. Arizona, it's not required. New Mexico, it's not required. Wyoming, all you need is an orange hat or an orange vest. Montana and Colorado, you do need blaze orange. Uh, Alaska, you don't need blaze orange. So when you see it, it, it just depends on what state we're hunting in. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Do I use a digiscope on my spotter to help with long-range glassing sessions? I don't. Do you use anything like that, Marcus? No, no, we have no. That, that lens. Oh, yeah. Marcus has what we call the bazooka lens, so we don't need to digiscope. What, what's that lens? What's, what is it on the end? 100? 150 to 600 with a, but then we have a teleconverter too. Yeah, a 150 to 600 lens with a teleconverter. Converter. So a lot of times, you know, if you see like amazing footage from Marcus, it's because he's packing. What do you think that lens weighs? Six, uh, one lens for the camera, just the one lens weighs six pounds. He's like, oh, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, what do I think of the new Nevada app? Well, finally, a Nevada question. The Nevada deadline is the next one, so it's good to see a Nevada question. Nevada <coughs> has a new application system this year, just like Colorado. I went out and used it the other day, and it worked great. Uh, how do I like it? I, I think it'll be just fine. Uh, but don't forget, Nevada is no, uh, April 16th. And we talk about Nevada, and you'll hear in this YouTube video we're getting ready to post, that Nevada is a tough state because you have to buy the $155 upfront license if you want to build points. That's a pretty expensive license every year to have to buy just to build points. But if you do it, hopefully your budget allows you to apply for all the available species. Like I apply for elk, mule deer, antelope, desert bighorn sheep, and California bighorn sheep because I'm trying to get the most money out of my $155 non, non-resident license fee. It's a bonus point system in Nevada. They square your bonus points. So if you have 10 bonus points and I have two, you get 100 random numbers. I get two squared is four. So you got a way better chance with 10 than I do with two. So it's just kind of a, a weird way of how Nevada does it. But, man, if you draw a tag, Nevada has unbelievable hunting for every species. And it's like 84 85% public land. Wow. Love that. Uh, let's see. Someone had, do, do pressured cow elk look for sanctuary? If they're pressured, they will. Uh, but not nearly to the degree that bulls will. Cows have to get, they're, they're still going to have food as a high priority because they have to get through the winter and have that calf. So their mind is always best food, best food, best food, best food, best food. So they're going to make sanctuary not nearly as high of a priority as a bull will. And they don't get pressured as much as bulls. So usually you're not going to see cows in some of the super, super tough sanctuary areas where you find bulls. Mm, Nathan asks, what system do you use to purify water when on backcountry hunts? Uh, we use a big Catadyne base camp system. I don't know, it, can, it will filter a lot of water in a hurry. And now we have those new Catadynes we gotta try out. And every time I bring it up, Marcus, I forget. It was like a B free, I think is what it's called. It's like a, a water bladder that you can drink out of, and it's got the filter right in it. They sent us some of those, and we're going to be using them this year. I'm, uh, I'm excited to use them. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
<laughs> Corbett, is it just me or do Mountain House meals taste the same after two weeks straight? No, after about a week straight. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I don't know. When we get off the road, it, it's amazing how many Mountain Houses we've probably eaten in a, in a season. Uh Nathan asks, are you going to do any speaking events in Wyoming this year? No, I'm not. My next speaking event is next week. At, I'm looking at the calendar here. I'm going to be at the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Rendezvous in Boise, Idaho, uh, the 11th, 12th, and 13th, if I read that right behind that. Am I reading that right? Or is it the 12th, 13th? Whatever Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is of next week, 12th, 13th, 14th. And then two weeks later, I'm going to be at the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Society in Denver. Uh, and those are the end of my appearances for this year. Um, and I'm the MC of the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation Banquet here in the Gallatin Valley on Saturday. So I guess that's, that's an appearance. Those, those poor folks got to put up with me as MC every year. I probably run off more people. Well, Gino says, Randy, have you ever been spring black bear hunting? I think we've got five spring black bear episodes out on our YouTube channel. Yeah, we go out, we go up to Alaska a lot. Uh, we're going to be up there in May. Marcus is going to film me and Mike Spitzer chasing great big beach bears, I call them, black bears on the beaches. All right, Marcus, any new Traeger grill meals to discuss? What's the pizza secret, man? He's holding out on a... Marcus came to work this morning and he said, I'm never cooking a pizza ever again in my oven. Did, did. You, yeah. you did a Traeger, or a pizza on a Traeger? Yeah, I'm going to smoke an elk roast tomorrow. Too. And you, okay, tomorrow he's going to smoke an elk roast. We need to just talk about, we need to have you sit here and you can do the elk cooking segment, <laughs> right? Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> Lance says, uh, no elk in Nevada. Move along, move along. <laughs> And the deer are scrawny. <laughs> uh, I am sorry, Lance. I've had an elk tag in Nevada, and there were a lot of elk when I was there, and I've had a lot of deer tags, and I've found plenty of them that weren't scrawny. So the, the word has been out for a long time. Don't get mad at me. Mm. All right, Kevin Jones, here we go. I'm going to make your day, or am I going to get you in trouble? Kevin Jones says, Randy, my wife is sitting here with me on the couch, and I think I'd be, uh, I think it'd be best if you gave her a shout out. Her name is Ashley Jones. Her nickname is BB. Hey, BB Jones, thanks for watching us. All right. Hopefully that works. Randy, what is your comfortable shot distance? Uh, it depends. I, we've answered this quite a few times, and, uh, it, it really, really depends on conditions, whether you're talking archery or rifle, obviously. For me, I have that, uh, I've been doing it long enough, I have this feeling of, I got this. If I don't have that, I've got this feeling, I'm not shooting. That's why when I do miss, I'm like, what the heck? How did I miss? Uh, so, it's just, I, 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 I can't say... A set distance. It's all about conditions. It's about how the animal is is placed. There's there's all kinds of of things that go into that. Tony says that Marcus needs a mic, uh, and John says the same thing. Well, if Marcus, if we had Marcus mic'd up, you would hear all kinds of noise in the room here of him running the camera, moving back and forth, and then people would be saying, "What's all that noise in the background?" So that's why Marcus doesn't have a mic. John and Tony and others have, have made that comment. So sorry about that, but that's kind of how we got to do it here. As someone from Arizona, what would be a western state to consider for moose hunting? Idaho. Idaho has the best draw odds, and we're going to talk about Idaho once we get through to the Nevada drawing. Uh, Idaho, you have to decide if you want to apply for moose or goat or sheep. If you apply for moose, you can't apply for anything else. If you apply for goat, you can't apply for anything else. If you apply for sheep, you can't apply for anything else. Or you can choose elk, deer, and antelope. So the moose odds in Idaho are the best in the West. And the quality of moose is still really good. Even though it's been impacted by wolf reintroduction, uh, it has had a big impact, probably more of an impact on moose 
percentage wise and it has elk uh it's still some really good moose hunting just don't draw my tag okay this is my year i've told marcus and michael this is my year in idaho year number 14 or 15 i'm finally gonna draw right sure randy all right andrew says randy what's your workout regimen we did a video on that if you go out to our YouTube channel, we did one. It's about Sitka's travel, train, and workwear. I go to my CPA firm. I disinherit the federal treasury for an hour or two. I travel around town, get a cup of coffee, and then when we really got to train and work out, we head down to Dairy Queen and we get obliterated. I'm sorry. I'm like a contrarian. I'm not like these guys who they are at the gym doing all this. Just not my style, right? I drive a desk for a living. I don't really work out until I get through tax season. And then I use spring bear hunting as my way to start hitting the hill and getting after it. And then I hike every day. Uh, starting in May, I hike every day. I try to give myself two to two and a half hours of hiking every day, work my way into it. I've yet to find anything that replicates uh, elk hunting than hiking off trail, on trail, uphill, downhill, side hill with a, a load on your back so randy how long did it take you to draw your bison tag in montana i think this they what was that they started in 2006 i drew in 2013 so it took six or seven years something like that so uh what else we got marcus we've been at it for an hour you got anything really good that i that you've seen that i haven't uh I haven't Problems covered. On your workout routine. How many dilly bars can you eat and still stay skinny? <laughs> How many asking, dilly? Asking for a friend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so this person is asking for a friend, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I love that asking for a friend. How many dilly bars can you eat and still stay skinny? I don't know because I don't stay skinny. So I couldn't answer that question. Oh uh, gosh, I need to quit this Dairy Queen thing. People are gonna think that Dairy Queen's paying me money or something. They're not uh <clears throat> all right i don't know oh kevin it's a win i uh bb's husband says hey randy that's a win uh, <laughs> she got all red in the face and said wow kevin uh good to hear that hey cory ben says he's gonna see me at the rocky mountain bighorn society in denver next or at the end of the month that's cool i'd like to see you there cory uh any chance of hunting california blacktail on public land uh Probably not. We've, we've answered this before is because the best blacktail hunting in, color, in California is in the wilderness areas. Uh, not all, but most, uh, the best stuff. And we have a hard time getting film permits in wilderness areas, public land film permits. And uh, I've tried to do that. I've talked to them and uh, not been able to solve that riddle. So uh, Lane says, Randy, will you be back on YouTube with your Elk Talk Live anytime soon? Unfortunately, if you're aware of how all these platforms work, YouTube is owned by Google and they view Facebook as a competitor so they don't like to talk to each other. So if we go live on YouTube with this platform, we can't go live on Facebook. And then we could record the file, but we have no way to get it on Facebook. So the other option is to do what we do, take it live on Facebook like we are right now, and then we can save the file and because we have a YouTube channel that will host large amounts of video, we then post it the next morning on YouTube. They say they're working on that, trying to sort it out, but for right now, please bear with us. We're trying to reach as many people as we can on as many platforms as possible. So Chris asks, what is a wilderness area? Did we cover that in our last podcast, Marcus? Did we talk about designated wilderness areas? So. I think we did, but the Wilderness Act of 1964 defines a wilderness area as to have character, natural characteristics untouched by the hand of man. Uh, that's what it is. And so Congress designates certain areas as designated wilderness areas, and it's subject to the rules of the Wilderness Act of 1964. Don't think that just because it's wild country that it's official wilderness. There's a lot of roadless, wild, nasty country that's just public land. It's Forest Service land or BLM land, but not designated wilderness area. So, all right. What do we got, Marcus? I'd really, really like to end with a good one, but I don't think we got one. Huh? 
All right, I'm going to go with this one. Did you buy some llamas? I guess pack llamas are really hard to find. We didn't buy any, but we're renting a bunch of them from our buddy Bo down at Wilderness Ridge Trail Llamas. I think we got four of them rented for this year, Marcus. Sweet. And there's an old saying that says, don't buy things, don't, uh, other than real estate, don't buy when you can rent. Let someone else deal with the headache the rest of the year. And that's why Bo has the best pack llamas. I, uh, they're just unbelievable animals. So anyhow, folks, I think we're going to call it quits. We really appreciate you joining us. And uh, hopefully you'll tune in again next week. And we're going to hopefully, or I'm going to ask you this, have some more Nevada questions next week. We only had a couple. I had to almost force the Nevada issue. But that's the next deadline that we're talking about. And I don't think we're going to get any draw results between now and then, are we, Marcus? Not that I know of. No, not until April 16th. I think that's the next time we get any draw results, and those will be from Montana. Thanks for watching.